Welcome back, Steve Parisi. Happy to have you on the channel. It's been nearly a year since we last collaborated. I don't know where the time goes, but it certainly does fly when you're serving people at a high capacity and building business, family, life, personal faith, you name it. So with that being said, I, I want to thank you for spending time with us today. We're going to be talking about what is convertible term insurance? Um, you know, how does it work? When is it applicable applicable for an individual to consider? And is there maybe an alternative to, to doing this, you know, to see, okay, whether this even makes any sense for someone to be looking at this? Um, so yeah, th this is something that interests me, I think more than most of my clients that honestly don't even know about it. Um, many of the people I've worked with one-to-one -one started with their personal finances, getting out of debt, getting their cash flow up, fixing their credit, and then they learn about cash value life insurance, how they can really save money tax-free, safely. The money is liquid and available, comes with a tax-free death benefit, protects their human life value, and then there's a living benefit, which is the cash value, which allows them to you know, bar against it and do a lot of different moves, a lot of freedom with that. And that's really attractive to them. Uh, but then there's a, a group of people that I'm always working with that are not ready to be you know, saving, say, 10 plus thousand a year, 50 plus thousand a year, or even in the neighborhood of six, multiple six figures, where they're, maybe they're only cash flowing a few hundred dollars a month and they're looking to protect themselves, looking for life insurance. And some of them, like myself, have heard about convertible term. The other option is regular term life insurance, right? Which most people are familiar with. It's like renting, right? Versus owning where like you own a whole life insurance. It's, it's yours, you own the death benefit. It's term, you're, you're renting for a period of time. And once that period is done, you can either renew it, but it'll be at a much higher cost. And then we have convertible term, which is, I, I'm i guessing here, it's like in the middle where it's it's term life and it's relatively, you know, cheaper than, much cheaper than whole life out the gate, but gives you the ability to eventually convert into a permanent life insurance policy. So based on your years of experience in the industry, have you personally served people when it comes to convertible term or do you have a, a totally different conversation? I just want to get your feedback on that. Yeah, definitely. So really good question. And the question does come up quite a bit. So to answer your question directly with convertible term, have we served people with that? Yes, we have. Uh, but I'll say we don't we don't do it a whole lot. And the specific reason why, I'll start with a high level overview, is if someone is working with us, they're coming to us typically because they want a whole life insurance policy and they want it set up right their goal is maximizing cash value and then using the cash value, the stuff we talk about all the time. So if, if we go with a convertible term policy, the issue with that is I can get the term policy. That's cheap. I've got the option to convert it. What Oops. that means. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped my marker. <laughs> no, all good. What that means is when I convert that term to whole life insurance is I don't have to go through any underwriting. It's a very simple and clean conversion. I say, flip it on to whole life. There's a form signed and that's it. So it, it's easy. The disadvantage is with a convertible term, we typically cannot set it up the same way we would set up a policy where I go through full, full underwriting from the beginning. And this does depend on the insurance company. Some insurance companies have no limitations as far as what that uh, term conversion looks like. Some companies do. So for example, if I want a policy with, uh, I'll use Mass Mutual as an example. I want a 1090 split. I want to fund $100,000 per year, just to use a round number. It could be 10K, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna, going to fund 100K per year. I want the cash value optimized. I can set the base premium as low as $10,000 per year. Minimum is 10, small term rider plow everything else into PUAs and my cash value is maximized. That's if I go through full underwriting. If I said, I can't do that now, but I want to get underwriting out of the way right now, let me take out a term policy and I'll convert it five, 10 years down the road whenever I'm able to. You can take the term policy out now. You'll have to go through full underwriting for that. But when you convert it to a new whole life insurance policy, based on the rules that Mass Mutual offers with term conversions, the base premium, it would depend on your age, it might end up being thirty dollars or 
because they require a certain percentage of that term conversion be whole life insurance. Is there is there a yeah. um, is there a set percentage, regardless of age? Um, so again, depends on the company. If you look at Mass as an example, That's yes, massive. what they require is fifty percent of the new policy be whole life insurance, and then the other fifty percent can be a term insurance rider. Yeah, let me explain oh, that. Yeah, and then I'm going to take it to the whiteboard here. So okay. to, re to recap, we're using an example here of. Yeah someone that has a hundred thousand dollars and they want to throw it into whole life so they naturally would go through regular underwriting yep. and you know they want to maximize the cash value so they'll you know really really have a, a, a low base minimum base premium and then the max the rest of the dollars going into cash value but the yep. person that doesn't have the hundred thousand up front but will likely have it later on yeah. and they're trying to lock in their um their death benefit required amount for that number for the hundred for the hundred k yep they want to go through underwriting now because they're like hey you know I'm, I'm 40 years old now might as well you know go through underwriting now while i'm young while i'm healthy see if i yeah. can you know qualify for this dollar amount yeah so, so that's the type of person we're talking to it's a person that doesn't yet have the amount of capital they have some capital just not enough for the desired amount that they want to fund correct. and they they do plan on getting there at a later point in time yeah. and then what you said was mass mutual uh does offer convertible term insurance yep. and they require 50 percent of the death benefit to be whole life so 50 yeah. percent death benefit to be whole life which can result in this base premium being like you said somewhere around maybe 30 to 40,000 correct correct so there's a a nice exercise uh, I like to go through here if you want to you could use the whiteboard while I talk through it if you'd oh, like okay. yeah yeah it is, let's put on called the the top left or top right whatever you prefer fully underwritten policy or it could just be fully underwritten okay. where I'm starting fresh with a whole life insurance policy today so fully and writing yep, fully underwriting fully underwritten and you've got exactly what you had uh, had written already so you've got right. say 100k per year going in okay. yep 10 10k base 90k PUA mm -hmm. and let's let's do this so the 10k base let's pretend it gives you a $100,000 whole life death benefit got it and then we would add $900,000 in a term insurance rider to get to a million dollars. And we'll pretend that the total million dollar death benefit gives us a hundred K mech limit, right? So, which will not always be the case. I'm using round numbers here to make the right. exercise simple. Yeah. The $1 million total death benefit yep. with a mech limit of a hundred thousand, yep. meaning that's the uh, max dollar amount I can overfund into this policy. A whole life you you got it and where you've got that 100k death benefit so you, that's your whole life death benefit up top that right now is generating the 10k base premium so right. we set it for a 10k minimum and it gave us 100k in whole life then we had an, I had to add another 900k in term and that's a term insurance rider that you can attach to a whole life insurance product mm -hmm. so what so the next option what we'll look at if you want to put it underneath would be the term conversion so we're assuming that you got a one million dollar term policy and now you're going to convert it to a whole life insurance policy here's the difference the whole life death benefit when you convert it is five hundred thousand dollars are we saying that the term uh the convertible term out the gate is also going to be one million dollars correct so we're assuming oh. you convert the full one million to your new whole life insurance policy Right. So the requirement here, you see where I'm going, Mass Mutual will come in and say, okay, so with this new policy, you and I, when we design it, we want to blend it, whole life insurance, add a term rider in order to minimize our base premium. But the requirement with the term conversion mm -hmm. is 500,000, which normally, where would we set it if it was fully underwritten? 100,000. 100. So with a higher whole life death benefit, yeah. what happens to the base premium? Increases either... For every, say, every ten thousand gets you a hundred thousand. In this example, oh, 50. yeah, and it could be fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, you got it. So now we're going from a ten k minimum to a fifty k minimum. Got it. So if someone comes in saying, "Okay, I want a term, I want a convertible term policy because I want a whole life policy later, and cash value is my goal. I want a minimum commitment. I want to juice the cash value from the get go." The issue with that is when we exercise the term conversion, they're going to look at it and say, "Wait a minute." 
this is not what I originally saw. Like, why on earth would I do this? That premium is way too high. And I'm not comfortable with it. And now, could you yeah. talk? Could you talk to what you think? Say, estimating this example here, what the potential cost of the term convertible term would be initially for one million dollars? Oh yeah, like the actual term policy. Yeah, like the term policy itself would depend on my age. I mean, it could range from. 500 bucks to a couple grand per year, but a term let's say, let's yeah. say a 40 year old male thousand bucks. So my obligation to a convertible term is way less yeah. than my um, obligation to a whole life. Cause the obligation to the whole life, we're saying we want to put in a hundred grand, but we're actually only obligated to the 10, Correct. right? Plus mm -hmm. there's the, the term cost that gives us the ability to get to the to the 90,000 right? uh, in additional mm -hmm. PUAs. So I guess, w would you say there might be some potential misunderstanding either on the, on the agent and the client, like both when they're communicating, where it's like, yeah, you'll be able to pay in this number, Steve, um, but since you don't have that 100K right now, we could qualify, let's, let's get you qualified for the million dollars in order to get in a hundred grand. And you say, okay, great. And so the, the initial commitment's only a thousand bucks. And then in the meantime, you can be working on, you know, saving this money up so that you can get to that desired goal of a hundred grand. Correct. So that sounds mm -hmm. attractive so far, right? As we're speaking. But yes. if we're showing a, a whole life illustration where the premium is much lower, or, or I'm assuming, we would assume that the, the premium's lower and we're showing all this growth potentially. But then five years later from now, seven years later, let's say, Steve, you're ready to convert your $1 million term into a whole life. And now you have the hundred grand. The issue now is that the, the cost has dramatically increased. Mm -hmm. Correct. Due to the company's requirements. Due to the company's requirements. Now, now that's yeah. just mass mutual. Now, uh, w would you say there's a general range here? Of um, no. So, <laughs> so all companies okay. do it differently. Some don't have these kinds of requirements. Like uh, some smaller companies like um, Penn Mutual or Security Mutual I've seen does not have the same certain percentage of the conversion must be whole life and we won't bend on that at all. Some companies don't do that, which, which is nice, right? Especially if you've purchased mm -hmm. a term policy with them and trying to find out, hey, can I convert this? I don't want to have to go through underwriting again. Right. Can I get it optimized, even though it might be with a, a smaller company, can I still do that? And the answer is yes, you can do that. And would you say with security and Penn Mutual, the, you said no percentage, right? No, no uh, percentage to transfer? So c correct, no percentage, except for what the, the percentage would be if you were taking out a fully underwritten policy. So basically what you could do if you're starting fresh with Penn, for example, you can yeah. do the same thing when you convert a term. Okay, so if I'm understanding that correctly, let's use the same example here, $1 million convertible term yep. with Penn, and yep. I'm ready to convert it to get that 100K. Yep. The death benefit requirement for whole life is, is there is no requirement. Yeah, c correct. So if you, if you were to take out a policy with Penn, you're going to put 100K per year in, and you're gonna blend it with uh, whole life and a term insurance rider, the base premium, you might be able to get it as low as 20, 20%, call it $20,000. It's going to depend of on your the age. Death, of the um, death benefit. Um, no, so the base premium would be 20K of the 100K that you're paying in. Got it. So there's a requirement on the base premium for switching a convertible term to within a pen. Within yeah, yeah. You, you'll find just some of the design limitations when you look at pen compared to other carriers. The base premium typically cannot be driven as low as other carriers. Um, and, and yeah, they, they emphasize long-term performance on their illustrations. But if I can set the base premium, call it a 20K with the Penn Mutual policy, while I'm funding 100K per year, so it'll be a 2080 split, I can do that now. Or if I get a term policy right now, and I'm gonna convert that 10 years from now, I can set it up where it'll be the same thing or very close to it. As I'm older, the base might be a little bit higher, but still, it, it still can be optimized where they're not gonna come in and say, you have to have at least 50% of this new conversion be whole life, which is going to force your base premium, which you would see with a mass mutual, for example, even yeah. a guardian, they start out. If you convert within the first four years, you can keep the base low. But then as you have it have for a longer period of time, the requirements are similar to mass mutual. Really, the key is, is just 
knowing the the rules of the game, the different insurance companies and the limits that they offer with term conversions. Yeah. Because where it can be upsetting for a client and even an agent, because this is the kind of stuff that you can overlook so easily. And then you find out after the fact, like, why did no one tell me? They're like, well, we don't tell you. You have to read it. Like, <laughs> okay. But if you find out after the fact, like you showed someone probably a maximized cash value design. Now you're going to convert the term policy. The insurance company tells you, you can't do it that way. Now you go and show the client a design that has a higher base premium, where maybe you've educated them already on how to keep the base premium low to maximize the cash value. They're going to think that you're doing something to take advantage of the situation. Right. And, like, and the, the client's yeah. kind of like in a tough situation now because yeah. they've already been qualified for a million dollars of death benefit. So wouldn't it, would it be more difficult to get another policy, another life insurance policy, say whole life for another million dollars to get that lower base premium? Or would I have to uh, uh, cancel the convertible term? in order to qualify for more death benefit? Good, good question. So you can apply first to see if you'd be approved for the new policy. That's exactly what I would do. If I haven't had any health changes or health issues, mm -hmm. if I can just go through underwriting and get a new policy, if I'm approved, I would do that. Then I would drop the, the uh, term policy after I'm approved, just in case. Um, so you could do that. Now, if you tried to, do, to go through underwriting again and you were denied because of a health issue now, that is where the convertible term is very, very nice to have. And now it's, well, okay, now it's more valuable, the convertible Right. Term. Regardless of what the base premium ends up having to be. It's like, I get to keep this death benefit that I was once approved for 10 years ago, five years ago, yeah. um, and I'm willing to pay for that. So, so in certain situations, that's where a convertible term becomes extremely valuable. Someone's health changes along the way. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're not able to quite qualify for what we, what we wanted, um, but best case scenario is, is this. And would you argue that a convertible term would make sense at a pen more than a mass or? So yes, because of the design limitations, like you can definitely make that argument. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always leaning toward the major mutuals just because that solid, consistent proof of performance, meaning when people put money into a whole life insurance policy where cash value is the goal, like we've gotten the consistency, meaning here's policies from the 1970s, 80s, 90s issued in 2000 and what has actually happened. And it's been attractive, not just an illustration that looks good, but it's like the proof isn't there. And that's the big, big problem in the life insurance industry, in my opinion, over promise and under deliver. So that's why I like well-designed policies with the major mutuals. The proof is there and I've got the confidence that the client's money is safe and it also protects my company's reputation, because if you put someone in a product, you know where I'm going, where it under delivers, they're going to be upset with you. Like you increase those chances and I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing that. Um, so in that respect, I always like the major mutuals, but at the same time, if someone says, I want to get a convertible term policy, I want to keep my premium as low as possible when I convert it, just in case health issues occur, maybe it does make sense to take a, to, to take a convertible term out with a smaller company where we don't have those limitations in force, we can convert it however we'd like. When the time comes to convert, maybe we first apply with a, one of the bigger companies if that's what they prefer. And then if we're declined, well, then we've got that convert, convertible term as a nice package. Okay, that, okay yeah. that sounds like a good idea. So, you know, let's take that same 40 year old male and let's just say 10 years later, we're now 50. We have that same million dollar convertible term. And let's say it was with Penn. Yeah. And we don't have that restriction like Mass does. But let's say this 50 year old is still in great health. What you're suggesting that client do, especially if they're at the point where they're like, hey, I got the 100 grand now. I, I've got it. I've built the capital and I'm willing to put in this amount of money from age 50 all the way to, you know, 60, 65, whatever the uh, funding period they want to go with. You're saying, hey, before we convert that term and have to be subject to a potential base premium in the neighborhood of maybe 20,000, mm -hmm. right? If we're going off the, the 100K number, let's take a look at maybe Mass, maybe Guardian, see if we can get the same amount of death benefit required at 100K with a MEC limit, you know, of, of the 100 and a, and a base premium of around 10. Yeah, right? do what I want 
to get the maximized option and see if right. I qualify for it. Yeah. Because at that point, as long as I'm approved, then it would actually be in the client's best interest to get approved, get the new policy, then drop the convertible term before it expires. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. At that point in time. Now, same example, 40 year old male gets the convertible term 10 years later is not as healthy as he once was and does not get approved for a million dollar whole life, hundred K a year with the you know max fund amount. Then at that point you'd say, well, now it makes sense to just convert that and design the policy for the minimum base that that pen requires the rest all cash and it'll still perform, right? It'll still, yeah. you know, do what it's designed to do. It's just obviously not as efficient as to back up. It's a backup. Gotcha. Yeah. You've kept a good backup, right? In your pocket, just in case something happens to your health. That That's the exact route I would go. I try to get the high end option first, which is exactly when I say high end, what corporations do that we work with. How do I get that? If I can't, and I really want to keep that premium low, well, then I've got that convertible term as a backup, a convertible term with a company that has favorable conversion co conversion limitations. Meaning when I convert it to whole life, I can keep the whole life uh, death benefit low, which will keep my premium low. Gotcha. So w would you say, um, you know, talking to a client, talking to a potential prospect that doesn't have a whole lot of capital to work with to, yeah. to fund a life insurance policy, does the conversation of convertible term come up? Or are you more of suggesting traditional term insurance, like just a regular term policy? And then maybe we can go into the difference between term and a convertible term. You know, yeah. like, is there a cost difference between the two or is it kind of like the same? Mm -hmm. um, so what would be your uh, guidance there? Client, 40-year-old male, doesn't have a whole lot of capital to save in a, in a whole life policy. They're working towards it, but they also have a need for life insurance. So that's another piece there. Like, hey, I, I actually want to protect my human life value. I want to, you know, get some death benefit on myself. You know, I'm 40 years old, married, got kids, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, they, they like the strategy of, of building cash value, um, but death benefit is also a concern. You get a client like that that expressed these concerns, these needs. Are you then bringing up convertible term or regular term in that? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so they might not be the, the best fit for our company, like just to, to put out there that, that out there in the beginning. So usually when we're working with individuals, they're at the stage where they're ready to start a policy or they're, they're in the research phase, but they know it's something that they want. Um, and they're reaching out to us because of that. They want to make sure it's set up. They've got an amount in mind as far as how much they want to fund the policy with. They've done their research um, before they reach out. That's that's typically how we work with individuals. But in a case like this, because it has come up in the past, what I would do is mention a convertible term, a policy as an option, because it is an option there that they can exercise. I would also let them know that most people we work with don't do it. Then I'd explain the reasons as to why exactly what we talked about before. A lot of times it forces a higher base premium and someone says, I, I don't want that. So we don't even bother bother going down that road uh, for that reason a lot of times. So what I would do if life insurance is very important to you, Mr. Prospect, is I would look at a term policy. This way you're covered. And then what we can look at at a later date is a policy where you can really go all in with it. It would likely require underwriting again at that point in time, but that would be the, the uh, route I would recommend. This way, you, you're not putting cash flow into a policy where you're only able to afford the base premium or something like that. You're not seeing the value. And I say that because that's where most people do have buyer's remorse with whole life insurance. And that's the big thing. I want to prevent. I want to prevent anyone from getting into a policy, even if they confirm they understand everything right now, but they get into it and then feel like, oh man, like I've just wasted this money. It's taken so long to get it back. Like there's so many other things you could do with the money in the meantime. If you're using it for your business, for real estate, maybe just day to day lifestyle, whatever it might be, like in my mind, that is more valuable than trying to force yourself to make it work. And yeah, it might work out, but if you're stressed out and losing sleep, then no money, no amount of money is, is worth that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. 
So now uh, with term insurance or convertible term, are the costs the same or no, one more than the other? Yeah, it's minimal. So I mean, the difference you might see is if a uh, convertible term costs you a thousand bucks for a million dollar policy. Yeah. The regular term with the same company might cost 850 bucks. Okay. So say, for example, <laughs> million dollar, $1 million, both looking at a, a term for one mil, convertible yep. term for one million death benefit. We it would even be less than that. Yeah. yeah. We said at 40 years old, say, you know, maybe a thousand bucks. But with a regular term, you said like 850? 850. 850, maybe even closer to 900. Like there's not much of a difference there. Not much of a difference. Got it. And that's assuming you're with a whole life insurance company. You're at a company that really focuses on whole life insurance and offers a flat term or a convertible term. Yeah. If you look at, just cheap term, like with a, a banner life or protective or Lincoln yeah. companies that just focus on that. Now, all of a sudden you might be at five or $600. Mm, okay. Okay. So yeah. a, a term over at, like you said, like a Lincoln, say would, cheap would term you throw AIG like, on here. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. They typically have competitive quotes. Like that would be a case where you're just a uh, turn the TV on and you see those commercials. Yeah, Gerber up, Life. Uh, you know, $1 million policy for $15 a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's where you're talking like under 500 bucks. As low as you can find it. That's where it's, that's very easy, which is nice. You're just quoting the lowest rates and seeing which company will give a favorable rating to an individual. But yeah. it is pure term insurance, typically without a conversion option, at least not a conversion to whole life option. Right. And yeah. I would also assume not very many living benefits as well with that. Cor correct. Some, some term, some companies with term policies do have some living benefits in addition to the terminal illness rider. You're always going to have that with life insurance, okay. uh, but some companies offer that. I'm, uh, I forget the one that I was just speaking with someone on, but you will see that with some term policies, like a long-term care provision something like that. or something. Okay. Yeah. Accelerated yeah. death benefit, terminal illness, gotcha. Um, you're saying pretty much all life insurance policies today have that built-in terminal uh, illness rider, right? Terminal illness, yes. Oh. Yeah, terminal. Got it. Chron okay. Yeah, which is different from living benefits with the, the chronic illness or long-term care needs. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And and that's where the, the cost would be more. So when people Usually. who are looking at term insurance maybe want to keep that in mind where it's like, oh, well, this million dollars is more than this million dollar death benefit. Let me go with the cheaper one naturally. But if we're looking at what other features does this term come with that that term that's cheaper doesn't, then you see why there's those additional you know, fees. Yeah. And that kind of helps you make that decision. If we're just strictly talking death benefit protection and you know covering unexpected life circumstances that could dramatically shift someone's someone's life and you kind of check off all those potential boxes that could occur then then mm -hmm. great if we're specifically talking to the type of person especially on this channel yours as well people are doing research on how to max fund a cash value life insurance policy how to you know leverage it as a as a banking system and how to borrow against it and invest create positive arbitrage uh, self-finance different things you know kind of uh, skip over the banks and kind of borrowing from yourself to fund different projects. Those people are typically not so concerned about death benefit. And so someone is in a position where they don't have a whole lot of capital. When you're talking to that kind of a person that you know doesn't have the hundred grand or maybe has a couple thousand bucks that they can save per year, even though the death benefit would be way less than what they could get with a term, are you having uh, or educating them on, hey, maybe you start with a smaller policy, right? We don't have to go so huge. We would start with a smaller policy based on that 40 year old yep. age now. Yeah. Uh, and over the years, you can you can grow with it. We can yeah. stretch, stretch the MEC limit as much as the insurance company would, would allow yeah. or prove us for. Is that yeah. a, an angle that you take? With this? It, it, it is. Yeah. And a lot of times people are, are in a position like that where they say, here's how much money I want to fund this policy with. Like here's the maximum. Say it's a maximum of $10,000 on any given year, but they're not going to be able to hit that. So how we would set it up is with a $1,000 minimum, the ability to go up to 10 K per year, but maybe the consistent amount they can fund is two or three K per year with some room to grow. Yeah. What I would show in a case like that is 
here's a policy that's maximized for cash value based on what we discussed. You've got the $1,000 minimum, consistent funding of 3K per year, and here's what it looks like if you do hit five or 10K during a couple of years because they do feel, feel that they'll be able to do that. So in that case, the death benefit is minimized because we only need a MEC limit, a taxable line, to be able to accommodate $10,000 per year. So that, here's what it looks like from a cash accumulation standpoint. The death benefit does grow over time. So it looks pretty good, right, as time passes. Mm -hmm. but, but if they said, okay, I start out with a death benefit of 150K, I'm really looking for a million to start. What I would say is, we can, we can definitely show you that. If I'm you, here's what I want, here's what I would want to see in that situation. The policy with the minimum death benefit, the 150K, that's maximized based on the amount that you know you can fund, because now the cash value is going to be maximized. Then look at that same policy, but with a death benefit of a million bucks. Your cash flow, exactly the same. I don't want to increase it because now it's like, yeah, you can get it, but you have to pay more. If they said, here's the dollar amount I want to work with, there's no way I'm going to come and say, well, you got to pay more to make it work. I hate it when people do that to me. So <laughs> my point is I would show the two side by side and what you would see is the option with the higher death benefit. You'd have the life insurance you desire, but then the cash value, you are going to see it really lag compared to the option where you started with a very low death benefit. So what, what often helps someone is being able to see those two options side by side and they say, okay, that's way too much cash value to give up. Let me go with the minimum or hey, what's it look like if instead of a million, I go with 500? How much more do I have in cash value? I might be okay with that, having the death benefit I want and the cash value. Or maybe you look at a cheap term policy for 10 or 20 years in addition to the minimized policy because you're going to grow it over time, time as well. Really, like we would see what's most cost efficient there. Uh, so that could be a unique strategy as well. Yeah. Someone that like you said in that example, two, three thousand a year, um, maybe only gets them a couple hundred grand of, of, of death benefit. And if they have liabilities, other debts, other obligations, they're the breadwinner, and it exceeds that death benefit, something were to happen to them, you're saying maybe go with it like an AIG or Lincoln, get a very cheap 20, 40, 50 dollar a month term to make up for that difference yeah. of, of death benefit that you require so that we're not overpaying for insurance inside of the whole life just to get a death benefit and have to sacrifice cash value performance. Which is you saying. got it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. 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 Basic yeah. Basically you're just looking for the most cost efficient option. And it's usually the situations like you mentioned where someone says, hey, I do want some room to grow, but I don't want to throw money away toward insurance. Like I want to have this cash value asset because I really like it, but the, the death benefit's important to me. So right. with the amount of money that I have here based on your recommendation, what should I do? Do I just add a big term rider to a whole life insurance policy or do I juice the whole life insurance policy, minimum death benefit, maximum cash value, and then just set some of that cash flow aside for just a cheap, cheap term policy? Mm. I like that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. I think what's also pretty cool is I'm pretty sure you could draw an illustration yeah. um, that could you could show someone with a, a cheap term and a whole life versus someone with a whole life, higher death benefit, uh, the cash value is lagging. I'm assuming in my mind, you, the person that went with the smaller death benefit, more cash value, better it's in it's in an environment where the cash value can perform better can really uh, grow over the years that the death benefit would actually maybe potentially be higher in the long run yeah because the because the person that's funding you know two three four five grand a year would with a high death benefit that death benefit stays the same and the only way for it to really grow is they have to really put in more dollars in there versus the person that started low started with low funding and then they were able to put more dollars in uh, over time that that cash value really allowed to buy more paid up paid up insurance paid up additions and own that death benefit over a long period of time maybe you could argue yeah that five hundred thousand dollar term after funding my whole life for 10 years that 500k is now in the whole life yeah uh, in my whole life it grew by 500k i can now drop that term once it expires don't need it no more and now i've got full whole life uh purchased owned which is yeah. great you know, and that. so I like that a lot. It's really interesting. Anything else you want to add to this conversation, put a bow on it and, <laughs> you know, 
Uh, anything else that we might have missed here? Yeah, no, it, it's all been great. I, I mean, with a convertible term policy, it's always good to ask about it. But the thing is, before proceeding with it, really just make sure you, you understand exactly what the insurance company you're selecting will and will not accept. It, it's all awareness or the agent that you're working with that they're able to educate you on that because where one would get upset is if I get a convertible term expecting that I can convert it to whole life and convert it to the good whole life. Like the policy I saw where, hey, that cash value is exactly what I want. I want that type of setup. And then you're told, well, you can't do that because the insurance company said no. They're like, oh man, why couldn't you have told me that before I started? <laughs> I would have went a different direction. Yeah. So that's the thing. Just It comes back to setting expectations up front, having someone being able to provide that awareness. Like that's the big thing. Like that. that's, in my opinion, what really makes convertible term work or not work so if someone decides against it right. up front. Um, because if cash value is the goal, you want to know what's going to prevent that cash value from being maximized. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. So actually a, a, a question did come up yeah. in my mind. I want to make sure I don't lose it here. I think I might have lost it, but it had to do with, uh, so coming to the screen here, right? The, the yeah. whiteboard. The, if I converted a term and I'm talking to an agent that gives me, they give me a convertible term for a million dollars and I'm paying that, say that thousand bucks, whichever the insurance company is, is the agent able to guarantee me that I'll be able to pay in a hundred grand 10 years from now? Or is um, it just more so a matter of the split of where that hundred grand is going? That's not yeah. the guaranteed part because we don't we can't really know that because it could change in good, a few years. Is that correct? Good, yeah, good question. So you, you could um, set up a term policy and, and know in advance when I convert this term amount to whole life insurance, I'm going to have a MEC limit of of a hundred k. So we and, can and what happens? See that for the client. Yeah, yeah, that's simple because what'll happen like if you get a million dollar death benefit when you're 40 years old, maybe that gives you a, a fifty thousand dollar MEC limit. Yeah. If you convert, if you get a million dollar death benefit when you're 50 years old, now all of a sudden your MEC limit is $80,000. What you'll find, maybe it won't be that high, maybe it's 70K. My point is, as you get older, the same death benefit gets you more MEC space. So if you set it up right in order to be able to com accommodate the amount of MEC space you need today, it's 100% going to be possible in the future to convert it to, to whole life with the amount of MEC space you need. Got it. And what we can't guarantee as the insurance agent is what that base premium will be off that 100K. Correct. That's where you want to familiarize. Yep. Familiarize yourself with the limits, um, with the insurance company or companies you're working with, because that's where you'll see companies say, if you convert, convert a term policy to whole life after five years from when the term was written, that's where the whole life policy needs to be at least 50% of the total death benefit because you're going to blend that with a term rider. And that right there is what you're going to look at and say that forces my base premium higher. And I don't want to go show the client that when I showed them a low one before, because it feels like a bait and switch when you're not doing that, but it, it makes you look pretty bad there. So that's where you want to make sure you uh, are educated on that upfront to prevent that type of situation. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much. I hope this was very valuable for my audience that are in that process right now. Maybe you're Maybe you're talking to Steve's team on putting in a, a whole life insurance contract and maybe you don't have a whole lot of capital yet. And so we're looking at maybe some other options, especially if the death benefit is a concern right now and you're looking to just protect yourself. Um, there, We just went over where convertible term can make sense, where it may not make sense, where a regular you know, cheap term can be a nice substitute while you're funding a smaller whole life insurance contract for mass cash, max cash value. Thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate your time today. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Always great to uh, catch up with you, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. Everybody. God bless.